Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On this first Sunday after the Epiphany, our readings encourage us to witness Jesus' baptism and reflect on our own. But the language of the scriptures use is not the language of liturgical propriety. It is a savage language, the language of the untamed and the unpredictable. The reading from Genesis describes a formless void and a deep impenetrable darkness. It is not a marble baptismal font, a basin of warm water the Spirit hovers over. It is a windswept face, brimming with promise and risk. The psalm invokes a God of power, flames, and mighty waters who thunders, causes the oaks to whirl, and shakes the wilderness. And in our Gospel, we read that when John baptized Jesus, the heavens were visibly torn apart by the Spirit descending upon Jesus. And the very voice of God filled the desert air, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Church has never been comfortable with the baptism of Jesus. Compare the accounts of it in each of the four Gospels, and you cannot miss the discomfort of the authors. Matthew elaborates on Mark's story by adding that John tried to talk Jesus out of being baptized, and Luke will not even say that it was John who did it. John's Gospel says only that he saw the Spirit descend like a dove upon Jesus, but he does not mention baptism at all. Biblical scholars say that all this embarrassment is proof that Jesus was baptized by John, because when the Gospel writers tell you something that is not in their best interest, you can be quite sure they are telling you the truth. Apparently, what scandalized the Gospel writers was Jesus' decision to receive a baptism of repentance. Repentance for what? Wasn't the Son of God perfect, sinless, holy? Even if his intentions were good, what was the Messiah doing? in the murky water of the Jordan River, aligning himself with the great unwashed? Aligning himself with the great unwashed. If Jesus had listened to public relations experts, he would have been more likely to stand at the banks of the river, holding out a hand to anyone who struggled to get into or out of the river. He could have even offered to give John a rest and done some baptizing himself. Even if he were innocent, even if his intentions were good, this could ruin his reputation from the start. Who would believe he was there because he cared about the people and refused to be separated from them? You see the problem. Why indeed? Why did the Son of the Most High get in line for baptism behind the tax collectors and sinners? the very folk who could sully his reputation. Why didn't he care about appearances, about disgrace, about guilt by association? Aren't God's children supposed to care about such things? Evidently not, because Jesus, our leader and our Lord, did not seem too concerned about that. Instead of holding himself apart, Instead of protecting his own purity, Jesus stepped into the same murky water we stand in and wedded his reputation and his destiny to ours. In his baptism, Jesus entered into the full, unwieldy messiness of the human family. 
In one watery act, he stepped into the whole story of God's work on earth and allowed that story to resonate, deepen, and find completion. In our baptisms, we vow to do the same. In the waters of our own baptism, we join ourselves to all others and throw our lot in with theirs. If this doesn't startle you, you need to pay closer attention. To embrace Christ's baptism story is to embrace the truth that we are united, interdependent, connected. We are one with all humanity. Whether we like it or not, the bond God seals by water and by the Spirit is truer and deeper than any other. It makes a stronger claim on our lives and loyalties than all prior claims of race, gender, tribe, nationality, politics, or preference. It asks that we bear all the risks of belonging, the risk that others might hurt us, the risk that others will change, the risk that they will change us. Is it easy to honor such a staggering claim? No. Do we have a choice? No. Are we the church known for doing this well? No. But that is not because God's claim is optional. It is because we have tamed baptism, turning it into something merely ritualistic and decorative. But the truth is, we can't have the water without the relationship. We can't receive the sacrament without surrendering our separateness. It doesn't matter one bit if we're non-joiners by nature. Baptism becomes belonging. Nothing we do in baptism and in the life that follows is a private matter between us and God. Like Jesus in the river, this is something we do in union in communion with all humankind. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Remember, whenever we welcome new members into the household of God, we begin with our own baptismal covenant we say it with them to remind ourselves what is expected of us, to believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to take our place at God's table and grow strong on the body of Christ, to proclaim the good news that God has come to dwell with us in the flesh. Then we invite the newcomers to step into the water with Jesus so that their beings are united with all others, the well and the hurt, the weak and the brave, the wealthy and the poor. All of us who have gone before them have done the same thing. Whether we were carried in our mother's arms or asked to be baptized on our own, we stepped into the river of life with Jesus and all his flawed, faulty kin. There isn't a chance we will be mistaken for one of them, because thanks be to God, we are them as they are us. Christ's own forever. May we, during this season of epiphany and always, join Jesus as he stands in line at the water's edge, willing to immerse himself in shame and scandal so that the wonder of God might be ours to cherish. May we, too, hear the delighted voice that tells us who we are and whose we are in the sacrament of baptism. You are my child my beloved. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who commended themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week, Amy, Art, Ashley, Barbara, Betsy, Bob, Caitlin, David, Dick, Elizabeth, Jack, Jason, Jane, Jeannie, Jim, John, Les, Mary, Pax, Sandra, Sarah, Sherry, Terry, Tony, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders amid the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus, and on all others who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here and abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety and for the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered at this time. Let us remember and pray for our pastoral care team and Stephen ministry. Caring God, thank you for how you call us to bring your light of hope and love to others. Continue to guide us in our care, especially with our Stephen ministers. Give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care-receiving relationship the courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk alongside them. By your presence and Holy Spirit, continue to strengthen our Stephen ministers and leaders to provide the Christian caregiving that you have prepared them to do. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen.
The Great Thanksgiving is with Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death, we, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection. We, we await, await his, his coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of all time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, the holy God-bearer, Thomas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Using the prayer adapted by our National Cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray together. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one thing, earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and remain with you this day, this season, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>